College Meeting of Ohio County Physical Court to order. Uh, it's on the 25th of January, 2022, at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sam Small to lead us in a prayer and a pledge to the flag. Everybody hits. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you tonight, Lord, and we ask for your <clears throat> your mercy and your pray or your <clears throat> mercy and your help in all decision we make tonight, Lord. We just ask that you would guide us and lead us in the path that would be pleasing unto you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you be with all those that are sick and and in distress, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you'd undergird and strengthen them and, and help them through their times of need. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before you have the January 11th uh, meeting, uh, minutes, and I need a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, a bunch of transfers, so I need a motion to approve that. So, second by motion. Motion by Larry Morphew, second by Larry Kent. We also have a late list? No. No late list. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Bring that roll call, Miranda. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Camp? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay. The uh, bills and claims are paid. Uh, Justin, you want to tell us about the bonds on the agenda? That's just what uh, Ann had indicated we need on an annual basis uh, the different bonds, the county bonds, so they need to be posted. And so she asked this motion to be uh, be entertained. So, do I have a motion? I make a motion to entertain. Motion by second. Sam, second by second. I got a lay more if you beat you to it. That's fine. Is there any discussion? Any discussion or question? <coughs> Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Uh, Next, we have uh, Jim Duke here to talk about the uh, Comcare bid. I believe we uh, opened them before, but we didn't make the. Uh, yeah, I guess we did. Maybe it's a new one. Tell us what you got there. Thanks, Judge. Last uh, meeting, or two meetings ago, I can't recall now which, I was out of town, and I know you had taken bids for the equipment that you had requested that we, we get prices on. And there was a couple of items that we did not receive a bid on. I, I don't know if it's because of COVID, but it seemed like it's very difficult to get some of these vendors to 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 want to sell sell anything. No. But anyway, I was able to receive bids on the stretcher, and I have a bid from Ferno and from Stryker. Ann had asked me to get two bids tonight uh, for a similar piece of equipment. The, the stretcher we use is a striker, uh, a similar type of stretcher that's made by another company is a Ferno, and we haven't used Ferno in, in quite a few years. Uh, yeah, probably 40 <laughs> years, Helen says. It's been a while. But uh, I did get a price, then their, their price was quite a bit higher. The price for the uh, new, and, and uh, I did get a price for a new stretcher with six batteries from striker was $23,250.23. $23, the similar piece of equipment from Ferno was thirty-five thousand seven thirty-eight thirty-eight. Uh, obviously, we we would recommend the Striker, the, the lesser of the two. That's the equipment we're using, and we're having real good luck out of it. Um, so that that would be what I would I would recommend on the the stretcher. On the ventilators, uh, 
I guess once again because of COVID, I had a very difficult time getting quotes. I did get a quote from the company that you purchased the heart monitors from, where we get a lot of reconditioned equipment, equipment that's got a new warranty, but it's it's not new and it's like new. And uh, that price for the uh, ventilators from the same company, which was Master Medical, and that was a total for the six ventilators of fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, $2,450 each for the ventilators. How much was the total, everybody? Uh, it's $14,700, Jason, for the ventilators, mm -hmm. and $23,220, $21 for the cot. Do you need those in separate motions? or? Uh, no, it's, sir, I don't. Whatever you guys need. Is this, uh, is this to be paid from ARCA money, good? Yes, it does. And what you do the math on that, does it fit what we budgeted for the comp care uh, equipment? It's about $5,000 more. Uh, okay, well, we can figure uh, that one out. Resolution 220222 2 2 is $83,085. Is that, uh, this is to be added on to that? Is well, that what the, if you I think if you would make a motion, well, when we get to that, we'll change that to 885. That needs to be 5,000 more than that. Yeah. It falls within that. 8885. Mm -hmm. let's, let's do those in separate motions as far as the equipment. Okay, separate company. That way we'll have to visit it's so worth our. Okay, yeah. let's have one on the stretcher first. Make a motion. Motion by Joe Barnes and purchase the strike the, the okay. from Stryker and second by Larry Morphy for a purchase price of twenty three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and twenty two cents. And authorize the treasurer to write right the check. Uh, so, uh, is there any more discussion on that? No discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Hope like sign. We've got the stretcher purchase. Motion for $14,700 for the ventilators. Second. Motion by uh, Larry Cam, second by Sam Small, to purchase, purchase uh, ventilators for how many? Six, Judge. Six ventilators for $14,700. Uh, if there is any further discussion, being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That motion carried. Judge and court, I'd like to thank you for this. We uh, obviously, this is equipment that will belong to Ohio County Fiscal Court, and it just puts you all in a better position. Uh, I think Larry had asked a, a few months ago, he said, if you've got something you need that we can own, Jim, so be sure you're asking for it. And I like the way you framed that. That was a good way to put it. A lot of counties don't have that kind of foresight, but that, that's a good way to, to make sure you do this. Well, we take care of ambulance service here. We're proud well, of it. And, and, and it's what, once again, it's equipment that will belong to you, and we'll, we'll take absolutely good care of it, and we will make it last as long as humanly possible. Right. Well, you just keep doing the good service and keep them ambulances looking cleaner and everybody else is in the country like you've been doing. We'll, we'll do it. Thank you. Yeah, not because yeah. you're here, Jimmy, but you guys do an excellent job. We certainly appreciate it. Well, we, we work on it every day to try to take good care of people. Can I get a copy of those? I'm going to go for a minute. Did, did you talk about purple line? Yeah, we got that line. 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 No, we went ahead and done them last so time. We went ahead and did I think, Helen, didn't you call and get some information? We went ahead and did the hard work. Well, I knew what they were, though, like back camera. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if we actually did the. You did. Jimmy, last year, uh, we was at Louisville, you and we were at the hospital talking about y'all coming up to pick up a patient. Then people couldn't believe it. They said they won't do it, but y'all did. A few years, that was a few years ago, yeah. and that was me that did that. Was the yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they, uh, yeah, they said you you won't get an ambulance to come here for that. So there's no way you'll get an ambulance from Ohio County to come here. We we've gone as far as Atlanta, Georgia, to pick up an Ohio County citizen that needed to be taken somewhere else. Well, this, if they're from here, we take care yeah. of. Them. And this was county official, so that made good. And, and they were we were there in two hours and thirty five minutes. Well, you picked up Helen one time, didn't you, Jimmy? <coughs> but you we didn't want to just pick her up. We went down and made a, a nuisance of ourselves to the hospital and let her go. <laughs> uh, we, hey, I do appreciate y'all coming up here because there was no way that at that point in time that I could ever done anything but lay down. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, that. Larry and I know how much sure that was to get you to the hospital. Um, but the uh, we have a bid for an excavator. Uh, we only have one, and this is for the city of Floresville, uh, and 
Larry is opening it now. He's going to read it to us. There was only one. Denny, if you don't care, come on up. I want you to make sure this is what we've got. As we're getting what we did on it. But anyway, the bid on it is uh, from uh, McCoy Construction and Forestry. Where did you roll the one for? $51,997.79. This is the specs on it. Here, so. No, I say it's the specs. So I'll entertain that we motion. I'll second that. Motion right. by Larry Cam, second by Sam Small. To accept the bid from uh, McCoy uh, Equipment. And uh, he's going to give the price in a second. What's the price, Larry? Uh, 51000 51, Seven seventy nine, and that is to be uh, authorized to write the check. Correct. Yes. We have a motion and a second. Did you get a Miranda the motion and second? Yes. Okay. So uh, go ahead and do a roll call since it's bad. Pull up. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Town. Yes. Morfield. Yes. Small. Yes. That motion carries, and so we purchased that from the uh, ARPA funds. And, was uh, that actually from the ARPA or is that? Because we were also holding some money from the, the part uh, of it, the 50 CARES Act. Yes. CARES Act. Yeah. Yeah. How much was the CARES Act? Uh, 30 something thousand. Yeah, it was okay. 30 something thousand. Yeah, 30 something thousand. That was that. To but, clarify, that's from ARPA to City of Forestville, correct? Yeah. Yes. But here's the, uh, we're proud of this, so we can do it. But if anybody's listening, uh, these funds have strict guidelines on what they can be used for. And we're following those guidelines, so it's not like we're uh, playing Santa Claus. It's uh, no, no, it's all it said to us from the federal government, and it was just funds we were managing for right. them for the express purpose. So anyway, uh, uh, that that's a done deal. The next thing is truck bids, which we got none. We didn't get any. So I'm going to say, Danny, why don't you work with Charlie Shields? He kind of is our guy here, and y'all shop, but bring it back to the court before you actually purchase it. Okay. You had to bring it back for acceptance, but you're, you're off you off the hook on the bids. That's done. Do we still go through uh, like state? state you do pricing? wherever you get the best deal. Yeah. Who offers state pricing now? Got the dogs and stuff. They didn't left out everything. Uh, they do on the bid. They, uh, I don't know even know who does them on the three quarter tons. I don't think anybody does. Anybody does? I don't know if they don't offer state pricing. Uh, none of the companies are are giving the discounts. Yeah. So, like they used to. Oh no. But they still might have state pricing. Ford and Dodge and Chevy. Yeah. So you, we were talking earlier here. You can take your pickup back in, and they'll pay you more for your pickup than uh, what you get for it. So. Yes, we were offered. Uh, uh, huge profit on our emergency management truck. Danny, I will send you a purchase order for that excavator. Okay. Uh, so that's where we are. Next we have resolution 2022-22 ARPA as amended to reflect the uh, change logo. Now, is, this, uh, is this part of the second go around or is this first go around? First, first, okay. okay. I'll send you but every one of these has been voted on. Yes, we've all we've been uh, we've all over on that. So move on resolution. Motion by Larry Cam. Second by Larry Morphew for uh, to pass resolution uh, 2022-22 ARPA. Uh, is there any further discussion? Any discussion? If there's no further discussion. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Carried. So when will the second round be coming around for the fire department? April. Is that right? April, May? May. May. Uh, we have one personnel issue that didn't We're going to have that one on the top of the list, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, a mill driver we hired the last meeting. And it didn't kind of work out. Uh, she didn't pass her entry exam. 
And uh, so we had to hire another one, and I had to do it on emergency order because we were such trouble out there, we couldn't get the meal delivered without it. So I hired Miranda Brown, effective uh, yesterday, at 9.69 an hour. That's the normal rate for meal drivers, and there was hope. So wrote, I just wrote call uh, Miranda. Johnson? Yes. Ham? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Small? Yes. Yes. Bullock? Yes. Yes. I'll lay this prepare you can get it cast to after me. Uh, next, we want a uh, a brief uh, report from the arts program, uh, and Jimmy Cantrell's here to tell us what's going on there. Thank you all, and I thank you for this opportunity. I've given you all some handouts, um, project status report, and some other information, some statistics, and so forth that goes along with it. Um, the ARCH program, this is, you could call it your quarterly report. We've only been operating a quarter, the last quarter of uh, 2021. Uh, whenever this program was first started, I believe Ann told me that we was looking at three to six months to have it up and running. Uh, it was up and running with the first clients coming in in three weeks instead of uh, three to six months. And it took a lot of work, but we, we got it up and going. Um, within that quarter, we've been able to assist those that's been in prison, that's really coming from prison, from jail, and also through the judiciary system, whether they're in jail or not, or if they're just coming through for the first time. Originally, it was to, for re-entry, and I myself, with my experience with 25 years in the Department of Corrections and the Justice Cabinet, know that the system is kind of broken. Um, like a doctor, and I've told some of you, you can treat symptoms all day long, but unless you find the root cause and treat the root cause, you're not going to solve the problem. Yes, sir. So that's what we do. We, we go to the root cause. So we start with Justin and the judges inside of the judiciary system, and we will start early on. We'll break the cycle before the cycle starts. And we will interview those clients and find out what that root cause is as, as they come to us. And that way we can solve the problem and we won't have that problem of just treating them after they come out of the system. We want to stop that before they get there. So that, that's one of the things that I've implemented in this to, to get this to work properly. Uh, some of the programs, and at, they're on that first sheet on the project overview. One of the first things I've done, I, I talked to the jail, and one of the things was with some of the resources they had was or didn't have was IDs. I was told that uh, some of the jail staff had actually handed money to them as they, as they left jail because they didn't have an ID just so they could go get an ID. And they couldn't get resources because they didn't have proper identification. So I, I contacted Jim Gray, Secretary of Transportation Cabinet, and worked out a program with him. And what it is, is we have clients that come in that don't have IDs, that can't get resources, don't have IDs to get jobs and so forth like that. Uh, I can call now the Transportation Cabinet, and they'll call the Owensboro Regional Office, and they'll set aside a block of time now that I can transport those clients there, and they will not see the public during that time. They'll get us in and get us out. Those, those people will get IDs, and it's at zero charge for the county or the client. We get those free IDs now. Uh, we've got that set up for those, yeah. so we can get those IDs. I've done the same thing with vital statistics, so that we can get the second form of ID, which is a birth certificate. We can get those birth certificates provided, so they got two forms of ID now, so they can get a job, and they, they have those, and I've been able to do that. Uh, one of the first clients that Justin had assigned to me didn't have a birth certificate, uh, hadn't had one in their lifetime that they knew of, and was able to get that birth certificate for them, and that way we could get them into the resources that they needed. Uh, second chance employers, I started working with the second chance employers. Uh, we, we got that done. Um, there are several of them working with us. There's also a federal uh, bonding system that I'm using also. If the employer has a problem, they, they feel that they don't want to give somebody a chance or, or they're worried about their background, we can get a bond, a $10,000 bond for that employer, for, for that employee. And it costs the county nothing, it costs the employer nothing. It's a free system. The U.S. government provides a $10,000 bond, so if an expensive piece of equipment or something gets tore up or gets lost or something of that sort or something stolen, they'll get their money back within 30 days. So there is no risk, and that helps with the second chance employers. Um, treatment facilities, we've got the treatment facilities established for those that needed treatment. We put several in, in treatment. 
Um, I've transported some of those to treatment as well in Madisonville and different areas around to give them treatment the treatment they need. And a lot of those get referred through the court system as well. Housing was a little bit difficult. Uh, we have been successful, 100% successful, in getting people in either long-term or short-term housing. There's been no one we've had to turn away that we just could not provide something for or get that resource to them. And that's ongoing and we will continue to work on that. But as everyone knows, housing is, is an issue. Uh, there's other resources that we provided. Uh, we're not 100% successful on that yet because some of those resources are hard to obtain. But one of them is child care. Some of the people that we'll have coming out of jail or prison, when they get reunited with their children, they can't go back to work because they don't have the money right away to pay for child care. I'm working with the system through the state that was provided through the CARES Act. What that does, that provides vouchers for uh, child care. Those people, we can get, I get those vouchers for them and their child care is paid for. We've got the IDs now, we can get them to work, and we've got the work, the employers working for them, so we're working on this person as a whole. We're not just providing them a house and a job and just throwing them out on the street. We're providing everything that they need to get their life back in order so that they are more productive citizens and better citizens uh, for this community. And that, that's some of the things that we're working on there. Some of the additional programs that we've added is the monitoring system for home incarceration uh, and also an alcohol monitoring system for those that have problems with alcoholism that keep coming through the court system. The monitoring system is not something that we have to pay for as far as buying the monitors themselves. I went with a company that they, they send us as many monitors as we want. If we need 50 of them, we can get 50 of them. Those monitors, they only cost whenever we put it on that person's leg and they're in use. The minute I take it off, the billing stops. And most monitoring systems cost anywhere from $15 to $25 a day, most of them being around $25 a day for those monitoring systems. We pay $2.30 a day, and that is paid through the ARPA funds, and we're not having to pay anything the county isn't. And um, while I'm on that, there's a sheet you have there as well that shows the current cost savings with the monitors. Uh, I think it's your third sheet back. Yeah. Currently, I, I, well, I went to AM to find out the cost for housing somebody in our local jail. The estimated cost per day is $33 a day. Per month, that would be $993 per person a day or, or a month. And annually for a person, that's $12,045. The cost that we have with our monitoring system right now, um, per month, it would only cost $71.30 if we had to pay it, which we don't have to right now. Annually, it would only cost $839 instead of the $12,045. Um, annual savings, $11,205.50 per person. Uh, also, if we only run 10 of these monitors, which I've got, actually this week, I, um, we put seven in use. And we'll probably far exceed that, and I'll probably be up for 20 in use, is what I'm expecting. I'm sure Justin can verify that as well. Uh, but only running 10 monitors annually, um, we would save $112,055 annually with that and that's if we had to pay for those monitors ourselves if we don't it goes up to around uh, hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that we save a year if the clients pay for it or if we pay for it through our or whatever other funding so if we want to run 20 monitors uh, which is what we expect or more then we save in the county a quarter of a million dollars a year in, in, in jail funding and that, that's what that equates to. And it also frees up our jail sales and running back and forth from Hopkins in Newark County. Yes. That, that, the and those costs in those other counties is probably far more than the $33. And also something else, whenever we put these monitors on these individuals and they're at home, we're not paying for the medical care or anything else with them as well. They're, they're, they're paying for that themselves. So right. that's an additional fund above the $33 that we wouldn't have to incur. Um, treatment funding for those that the uh, court is finding that cannot pay uh, for their treatment, whether it's alcohol or drug treatment or so forth like that, we've got the funding for that. We're providing that funding and those resources free of charge for those that can't afford it. So we're not just throwing them back out there, we're actually finding those resources for them and providing those resources for those individuals. Um, the back to work program, um, like I said, we're providing the, the lost, uh, uh, are missing IDs for those people to get them back to work. The monitoring program also helps with that. 
once they sit in jail for a little while, they're starting to get cabin fever, they're looking at four walls. Uh, when they go home, they're doing the same. It's a great tool for the arts program because we give them a resource to get out because they can't go to work release on this. And it's also a great tool because not only are these people, a lot of them haven't worked in several years or haven't been working for whatever reason, it gets them out, they, they can leave the home, but they go to work. They're not allowed to go anywhere else. We know if they go anywhere else or not. They, they're given a zone that they have to stay in that zone of work until their work hours end. And if they, they leave that zone, we are alerted to it and we know it. If they leave their home, we're alerted and we know to it. We're, we're monitoring the system ourselves instead of paying a monitoring company. That's why we not operate the cost we do. And this encourages them to work. Some of the people that I have right now that's working, and we're just a week into this, uh, they're contacting me back, hey, I'm, I'm getting a paycheck. Uh, they're working, they're being productive, they're getting something they never had before. And during this time of incarceration, they get used to that routine. They get out of the old routine. They find out that they now have money that they can go and they can uh, finance them a car. They can have the things they want. They can pay for their own housing. They can have the things they need. So we work on this person as a whole, not just treat the symptoms. We find out what the root problem is. We, we work on everything as a whole. Get these families back together and make them more productive. Um, as far as the last sheet, the spreadsheet that I have there, um, I X'd out for confidentiality reasons the, the names of the people. But these are the resources that we have provided so far in the program. And on the last sheet, um, you'll see that we placed 27 people in this last three months of the treatment, uh, 21 people in the housing, uh, 29 people are employed. Those 29, there was more than 29 that was employed actually, but those are the 29 that sustained their employment and stayed there. That was 29 people that uh, normally didn't have stable employment, but they have it now. Most of the employment that I provided has been over $15 an hour. So I try to put them in the highest end employment that I can because the more money they make, the more they can do to sustain themselves and feel like they're part of society and part of, part of the community. And so they start getting those paychecks and they can do the things that they need to do and they, they've got that stable income coming in. And it's enough to sustain themselves that they don't have to do other things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, like I said, the ID system, um, we got that in place and I explained that, and the birth certificates. The other, the 53 resources that was provided there and the other, a lot of that's child care. Like I said, we, we've got those. So it can be various things. I've had the high school principal call me about uh, someone that didn't have electric in the home and the child had come to school and they uh, had an odor about them and we, I was able to contact uh, uh, KU and work out something for that family to get that electric turned back on. And it was the night that we had the snow. They turned it back on that night and worked out a billing process with them where they could manage it, get back on. It's things like that that happens. And that way, and some people, one might ask, well, why are you providing that resource in this? Well, if they don't have the money to have their electric on it and they're desperate, what will they do while they're desperate? We want to stop that before it happens. We need to, we need to work on those things, and, th and that's what we're doing. The judge and the county attorney is working really well with us on this. Uh, the client base is growing tremendously, very fast. We've got more and more coming in every day, kind of busting at the seams down there. It, it's getting hard to provide all the resources uh, that we need and get everything accomplished in a day's time and a week's time um, with the staffing that we have, which is, is me. It, it makes it very difficult, and as it grows, it's going to get even more difficult. But, uh, that's all I have. If you have any questions, so. that's, uh, I want to comment that uh, I'm really proud of this, and I'm really proud of you for making it work quickly. Yeah. It's sort of the dream we had of. Uh, uh, preventing uh, recidivism and, and decreasing the population in our jail. And uh, I knew that uh, people that get out without something like this are set up for failure. I mean, it's designed for failure. Uh, this has helped them succeed. But the one thing even shocked me if they take their ID and don't give it back to them when they get out. So they have to get ID. Well, sometimes they're lost in their arrest. The different things happen that they don't have IDs. Uh, sometimes the, what I've discovered in this, it's not that somebody's taking it. What it is is uh, they may be staying in somebody's home. Uh, they don't have a home of their own. And some of those aren't real suitable homes. So when they get arrested, that property's left behind. And those people will throw it away or whatever, and they can't go back and recover it. So they don't have those IDs. They don't have that property to recover. It's more the situation than that. Jimmy, uh, 
mental issues. Do you, do you, address, <coughs> do you address that to a certain extent? Yes, yes. I, 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 know, for, I know people <coughs> have anger problems, and yes. that's what I'm talking about the mental issues. Yes. Have, that have serious anger problems that well, don't fit in well with society, and that's reason for the question. Yes. And um, I can pick up on those fairly easy. Um, some of you don't know my history, I'll, I'll give you a brief <coughs> uh, Whenever I graduated high school, I went into the military. I uh, was injured in two different wars, and uh, I received uh, compensation for that. Um, I was still, I'm still allowed to work receiving that compensation. So when I came home, I didn't want to just lay around and do nothing. I feel sorry for myself, so I worked full time, went to college full time, got a degree, went to work in the Justice Cabinet and in the Department of Corrections. Retired from there after about 25 years, and I received a retirement from there as well. Um, I took this job when I moved here to Ohio County. I moved here because it's where my grandchildren live. I moved here to be part of this community and be around my grandchildren. I've done that just in August of this last year. Um, and I was big in community so, uh, services where I moved from. I moved from Eastern Kentucky. There I worked diligently with tourism and different things within the community and with our law enforcement and so forth and helping them. And when I came here to be around my grandchildren and be close to them, I felt like I didn't have a whole lot to do. I, I had too much time on my hands and I don't like that. So I seen this job advertised and you guys gave me this opportunity. And the reason I say this is because I received two other forms of income. I don't do this job because it's a job and I need the money. Um, the money that I receive from this job, I, I don't mind sharing this with the world. It's put aside for my grandchildren for their education and stuff whenever they get older. I don't keep any of it. I do this because I want my grandchildren to have a good community to grow up in. And that's why I'm doing this and i got a passion for this. And I will make this happen. I will make a difference. I promise you that. Well, I concur with uh, Judge Johnston. I, uh, I think you've done a fine job. I really do. Thank like you. So far, just on the uh, outer end, I, I hear good things. So, yeah. Well, we talked about years trying to get the ankle bracelet program going. Uh, yeah. You know, when we first got on court, me and Larry McMorton, that was one of the first things they told us to do. Does Larry uh, need a jail. bracelet? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, you get them, get them in and the, you got to establish which ones can, can apply to the program and get them out, you know, get them booked. That way you're not out for medical. And uh, I think y'all doing a great job on, on selecting. And I, I know that's not an easy uh, task on selecting who's going to be able to apply to that, you know, being able to be out on pretty much house arrest. But it is a, it is a big savings to the county, and, and it's, a, it's a big help to the individual to get back on their feet. You know, so when I started talking about anger, Jimmy started looking at me, and I didn't know. He said he knew angry people. But I, he knew <laughs> well, on kind of feet, so I, uh, well, the reason I, I was going there and I didn't finish on that that part of it is, in those 25 years that I worked inside of the Department of Corrections and, and uh, with uh, the Justice Cabinet, I taught anger management. I taught anger management. It was required for those that made parole. I taught it. I taught the substance abuse treatment program inside the prison system that they had to pass before they was allowed to make parole. So I understand those issues. It's easy for them to pick up on those. Yes. And I'll tell the court, it, it, Jimmy works really hard. I mean, he works really hard. He's getting contacted by a number of agencies and a number of individuals because this county, just as well as a lot of other counties, have a number of individuals that need help and need assistance. Mm -hmm. I, I think the court's gonna, I, I told Jimmy, he can't continue to do all of this all the time and do everything. I, I think at some point, the court may have to consider getting him some uh, administrative help and simply just taking care of making sure that the programs he has provided for them, um, that they're able to get the paperwork done. One of the hardest things that that, uh, that I would imagine, based on what I've seen, and, and Jimmy, may not even be asking for that, but for what I've seen, I think it would be hard for him to get the paperwork done and do everything that he's done so far. I think it's something that the court may have to consider uh, because of how, how this has grown so well. We put a number of people on those the ankle bracelets and, and uh, I've talked to Jimmy at the beginning. You're gonna have just as many that may fail you as you do that, that are benefited from it. Uh, that are going to trip and fall and trip and fall again. We're not going to give up by any means, 
But I, I, I think the worry would, that I always would have is that it may become so overwhelming without the administrative help um, if the programs continue as well as they have that, that Jimmy's done. And they, they just about are there now, to be honest with you. Um, and something else that I'll add about our monitoring system, our monitoring company that we are using, whenever I set up a client profile, I can put on their self-bill. Right now, the ARPA funds is paying for it. If I put self-bill, the company themselves, we don't do the billing. They send the bill to the client, and they have to pay for it. They pay in advance. They pay 30 days in advance. So that way, we're not got somebody that's behind on payments. But they let us know that they haven't paid. Right now, it's $2.30 a day is what it's costing us to run this system uh, per person. We can charge them what we want. Like I said, most places in the state, they're charging $15 to $25. If we only charge $5 per client for those that could afford it, $5, that other $2.70 per client a day, which runs in the thousands of dollars if you do the figures on it, could help pay for the program itself and, and that staff to keep this program going. Sounds like a great plan. Yeah. Well, and and that's just adding the fee to that, let alone not what we're saving already. Already on the job. Already on, we're saving, uh, for order, 10 people, we're saving $125,000, and that's not even adding the fee to the ankle bracelet. I feel like of ARPA, of all the things we've done, we've done a lot of great things, that this has been the best thing yeah. we've done in ARPA. And I we thank that. you for what you do, Jimmy. You certainly do. And most, cool. most of the magistrates have come down already and looked at the monitoring system. There's some things I can't release publicly. Anytime you want to come in, I'll run you completely through the system. Some of you have been down today and looked at it. I'll run it through to you. you can, I'll show you everything you, you need to know. Um, the things that I can't release publicly, I can show you individually down there. You might even put one on there if he, for a few days. <laughs> but Jimmy, I'll tell you, just to show you the dedication, Jimmy and I were talking, uh, speaking one weekend, and he told me, he said, I want to make sure these hit all the areas. Where are some of the areas that you would be concerned as far as picking up uh, whether whether the bracelet would be picked up or not? This son of a gun drove the whole county. I mean, he was up in, in Fordsville and Whitesville, up in the northern parts where we have some 911 issues, center town, stuff like that. He drove them around the entire county just to make sure that we're not going to have some spots that we need to worry about. Uh, and he wore it himself for four days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, he wore it to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the holiday weekend, I put it on Friday and took it off actually Tuesday morning. And during that time, I traveled all over the place. I went to all the borough, different places, covered every road that I knew to cover in the county, and everything worked perfectly. Sounds great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy, appreciate and it. we will look into uh, requests that Justin brought forward, and uh, um, I'll get uh, one of these guys and, and another county administrator to look into it and you can uh, write up what this would look like. Well, I said that maybe, I told him we could look at the next ARPA meeting. Yeah. Look at the next ARPA meeting, because we have the ARPA funds this year and then see the savings through yeah. the years. Yeah, let's do and that. And then we'll see through the years that that will pay for it. I mean, we've got the fund, funds to use to well, or something like that. Well, after one year, it should be paid. It should several, already pay so. for several years. Well, yeah. what Jimmy was saying, the way he was looking at it, how it can self-sustain and even bring in money to help keep that program going. That's, that's what we need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. so, and I discussed some things with these two individuals as well, um, that uh, ways to even increase those funds that we could discuss later that uh, actually bring in additional revenue yeah. to this county and not just savings, but actually bring revenue in. I would say, Jimmy, there's programs out there that there's a probably availability of grants. Yes. Down the park. Maybe yes, there is. I'm working on a grant right now, matter of fact, that uh, uh, me and I got set up to, to start working on. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on committee reports, I really wish they had called you today, Larry, uh, but on our jail report, I'm pretty sure by the next court meeting, the first one in February, we'll have our... Uh, our uh, interlocal agreement read God that the other two counties will have passed it by then. Uh, we've been, uh, we, Justin and I have been back and forth, back and forth with, uh, with the other two counties and uh, we're pretty sure that it's, we got what we want. Man. Everything's a goal then. Yeah, I believe so. So hopefully we'll do it. Then the next thing will be 
each county will appoint our board member. It, is that, that a fair assessment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how many, uh, how many board members will there be and how many board members from each county will there be? I believe that there will be two from each county. Once the selection is made where it will be, we'll have, that county will have a third one and it probably has. Yeah. On our initial board, we have the can uh, Ohio County having three, and Butler yes. and each having two. two yes. and the, the one extra one is, is, is based on where the site location is, and yes. we just don't know that. Uh, <coughs> right now, I think everybody's comfortable with it that way. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the big one now because we're the largest county. We have more bigger population. David and I have to be able to see about the, uh, the uh, camp out there. Uh, or not to just keep that. It, it, I think we better not talk about it much. Uh, the, the three of us, the judges, are going to meet with the state people. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and see if that's a possibility. That would save a lot of money if we could oh, get that. Would, certainly would. Uh, is there other committee reports? Jason has the uh, suicide prevention. Uh, we committee. have. We had to cancel the last meeting. There were some in, so we canceled. But we. I don't have a confirmed date yet. Do you know what day would? It was whatever was going to be the normal. Yeah, and I can't, I, I hate yeah, to I tell you, it's, it it's sometime in February, but I hate to tell you right now what it is. We had to cancel January. It might have been like that around the 8th, whatever that, it might be the first or second, or right. might be the second Thursday or something. Thursday, like yeah. Uh, and on the other committee, on the road committee, I want you to come in at four before the next meeting, and uh, for a road committee meeting, and part of that road committee meeting is going to be devoted to the storm cleanup because we're going to look at how we're going to do another round of it. Uh, the uh, vegetation debris from the roadsides is very close to being done. I mean, I'm talking about within a couple of weeks it'll be completed. Uh, we're going to start doing the construction of demolition debris that's put to the side of the road. We're going to start hauling it as well. Uh, and then hopefully, um, uh, Charlie's meets with the NRCS about cleaning out the waterways. So hopefully by the time we have this road committee meeting, because at that time we need to decide if we're going to go ahead and let our crew do it all, or if we're going to go ahead and try to bring in a contractor or that. You also might say Charlie's meeting next yeah, th Thursday. Th yeah, Thursday night there's a meeting right here in this, this room at 6 o'clock to talk about all of those deals. And then our NRCS and FEMA and all that. FEMA's going to be here. I'll tell you what, I've, I've just heard from some people up in my area, and FEMA's really been helping out. They, yeah, they, they have. They have. They really. They went above and beyond. And they came back here for extra days, even that after midnight. Well, I was kind of shocked the last meeting we found. I was wondering how many had filed for their nine digit PIN number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had 200 something people, and I mean, I didn't yeah. think that many people were solid. Right. I was worried that it hadn't got out, but yeah, the multiple have. there's multiple claims for the same property. Okay, and uh, sometimes multiple owners and sometimes multiple losses. Well, well that same note, uh, you talked about the cleanup on the brewery. They started cleaning up the uh, contract or the the volunteers out of Owensboro, which is the is the Owensboro sewer company. Uh, I don't know exactly. Uh, you know their initials that they go by but they're down there uh, helping in the center town area they started yesterday they started hauling debris yesterday they're hauling it into the combines there where we we could get them a location where we can burn it later yeah joe was helpful in getting us a place to put it down so we didn't have to haul it as far yeah. but the, they're gonna they they said that they could uh give us a crew and uh, only one crew at a time but if we get if they get done down in that area they would be glad to move on out to other areas too. We just took them down that area because that way we didn't have to pull and mobilize the road department to move back and forth. And since we had a local dump site, we could um, do that very well. We a lot of and I, you know, I think as soon as we get through the Chandler loop on the brush, there was some uh, there was some house debris and everything that they're going to actually back up and haul to the landfill. Right. Uh, Nick was supposed to facilitate and make sure that they haul it in there under us. Yes. But uh, then we'll have that road cleaned up, and then we're going to go out to the Tansas Road yeah. and uh, finish it up. So they started that, and it's going really well. I think 
between the state and the county, they they make considerable progress. <coughs> in, uh, well, in we, we, with the email we get, every county road department's out the tornado. I mean, yeah. where was that at today? Is that up in your area? Yeah, I've seen them pass through today on several occasions. Okay, they're up in your area today. They had like seven or eight people up there. They're probably on Clinton Lane, I would suspect. And another thing we want you to think about, too, is that Beaver Down Fund. Uh, like there was name an update on that too okay uh, I will get Jody to the next court meeting to do it she's on the committee but it's roughly the rough round rolling numbers is mm -hmm. that we've collected 30,000 and paid out a little over 20 because so I saw she had a post today but there's a little bit of money left over yeah. that people are needing. there there was yeah there's about roughly for rounded off numbers it's been 30 collected and 20 paid out but it's still coming in. And that might be something they need to talk about Thursday too, when people we're, we're yeah. kind of, you know, this is, there's this funding here too. I'll make sure that our committee okay. members are there. Okay. Uh, any other committee reports? If there's not, let's go to, uh, Miranda, be sure to remind them to uh, come in early next time. Four o'clock, and, Yeah, and uh, uh, so I'm gonna call for magistrate's comments and, and requests. We'll start with Sam's mom. Uh, no, Judge, I don't have anything, no. Jason. No, thank you. Yeah. I uh, just want to extend uh, thanks to all the volunteers that's out that's been working on this tornado debris. I know, you know, it's been uh, yes. just about a month and a half now. Sometimes that doesn't get reiterated, but we still do have a lot of volunteers that's, that's helping. And that's uh, that's gone a long way with helping our road department, helping the county, and helping keep costs down, and, and helping the individuals too. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. So, and the group you just told me about, I wasn't even aware of that but there are several groups here working. Appreciate that. Larry? I uh, just want to echo what Joe said. We appreciate all the volunteer help that's been out there. It's, uh, it's volunteer, people out there on their own behalf, and it's good. And it's, uh, I think you're kind of thankful to live in a county like Ohio. Right. Know that there's people out there that's ready to help. Right. Mm -hmm. Larry? I don't have anything to make good. Justin? No, thanks, Judge. Thank you. Well, if there's nothing else for the good to come for the good of this body, I'm gonna call this meeting adjourned. See you in a couple of weeks.